the farmers themselves, the farmers need to have the information on the seeds which are in the market. Since they are interested in color, the market, the market of the, the seed, the maturity period, that's what moves them most yeah, to buy the seed. Mm -hmm. This irrigation can do well if well guided, because you find that sometimes it is thinking can work well when you leave the farmer to do the work alone. The farmer has to be supported. Then we also need to encourage good formation. No, something done in groups is much more better than an individual. When groups are formed, at least you know there you have better things. And of course it's easy to train them and take them through something. When there is a group which is planting, there is one which can be involved in the weeding, then there are those which are involved in taking care of the was carrying the birds, then the adults will be harvesting. And after all that, since the income is for the very group, for the next planting, it would be good to encourage them to have a kind of a revolving fund within themselves. Shuhuri na aje, shuhuri isha mimi ni na shibuka na mambo ya kilimo, na nalima mtama. Tama na utumia katika chakula, pia tunatengeneza na kinywaji ama pombe. Asi, hayo ndio shuhuri ambayo tunayo shulikia katika hapo kijijini, ndio shuhuri kubwa. Na ukubwa wa shamba langu, mimi mimi mwenye binafsi mnashi, na ekali kumi. Na nalima zao, ilo la mtama. Kwa unahitua, e, mesia. Yeah, <laughs> bado anakwenda tu tuna ujuzi ule wa kuweza kuyafanya kama jinsi nimependezewa sana nilipoona hii hii ramani na jinsi maji yalipokuwa yametumama yani pale ni kilimo kweli ambacho kinaenda moja kwa moja bila matatizo lakini sasa sisi tunategemea tu mvua ikipiga ikiwa ikiweka jua basi ni na mazao yanakuwa yamekauka so kama ni parameter the major step of crops there but they face a lot of challenges in production because being a semi arid area um, face, we basically rely on many fed agriculture, and the, which is unreliable and unpredictable. Sometimes they even receive less than 300 millimeters um, per year of rainfall, and uh, that one is a cost to because after farmers begin planting and when it grows, uh, the crop dries up, and uh, you find you get no yield sometimes in some years. So introducing this spade irrigated project there, I think will be of benefit because we shall make uh, most use of the floods because that place is very vulnerable to floods from the mountainous areas in the region. So we could use best we could best use the floods existing there to uh, grow the crops which are resistant uh, to drought. So gum itself. Uh, the seed is in, in Tanzania is of poor quality. With improving the seeds, sorghum seeds, uh, from the research to, the, to, to production, we will make sure that the farmers are going to get uh, quality seed and they will improve the yields. Additionally, when farmers get good yield, uh, when farmers get good seed, it is also important that they share the, the quality seed with their neighbors and that will uh, lead to food uh, security. And what are the opportunities that are coming up is that we have these very, very unique areas where young people could have an opportunity. They are in areas that are not common, areas that are not usual, but areas where communities are making a life and doing amazing things growing crops under flooded environments. There could be remote areas for some countries. There could be areas where the normal kind of infrastructure is not very good. There could be areas where amazing innovations have happened over time, but maybe they could also be removed from the normal environment. So we have to
to start asking ourselves who are the youth that are remaining in this environment and how can they continue to support their community food production, their community business development. And this is one of the areas that I really, really look forward to seeing how it develops. So if we could find a way of tapping the youth dividend into agricultural production through this project, it would be very, very, very nice. It is something I've experienced in the work I'm doing, and I'm sure most of the other projects still have that dilemma about how to integrate the youth, because mostly gender is focused on men and women, but there's a category that is transitioning into men and women that we need to cater for in this project. The spade irrigation systems are kind of quite well known in, in some countries, but not in the countries here. Kind of, uh, we want to introduce them or, or optimize them in, in Kenya, uh, Uganda, and uh, in Tanzania. Um, and I think they offer um, an interesting new perspective in, in dryland areas where people have a scarcity of water and to deal with climate change. Um, at the other hand, there's marketing opportunities with these um, uh, new crops, as well as increased um, um, nutrition perspectives by introducing a more diverse uh, diet. So bringing all these strains of research together, I think, will create a really interesting um, yeah, new approach to um, dryland development. So in countries like uh, Uganda and uh, Tanzania, uh, many brewery industries are using sorghum, for instance, as raw material. And uh, many farmers are also involved in uh, sorghum production. But it happens that these uh, farmers sometimes they produce and they are not able to, to market. Or even though they are producing, they are not uh, producing this uh, varieties the brewery industries are looking for. So, if uh, we happen to connect these uh, farmers to the brewery industries, they can be able to market their product. And uh, most importantly, they can mainly produce the very varieties that the brewery industry use as a raw material. So, okay, in my opinion, I think that uh, once, once we're rolling out this technology or a new message, we need to have this message well packaged and delivered to civil sub, um, to extension workers, basically because they are the ones who interface with farmers on a day-to-day -day basis. And when farmers want information, they are the people who are nearest to them, who they want to, to get information, to get advice, and uh, to be helped out of any problem before that problem or issue is transferred back to research or back to any other players like seed companies and so forth. Um, so them um, and millets are major crops, important crops in the in in our, in our country, Kenya. They are very good in the semi-arid areas. Um, a bigger part of the country is semi-arid, and so most of the crops which grow there uh, do not do well. Mostly the crops which need a lot of water. But sorghum millet succeed well in the dry areas of Kenya. But due to the climate change, we have seen reducing rainfalls and higher temperatures. So we might end up relying on a spate irrigation for some of the crops like sorghum millets. Uh, those crops do well in spate irrigated areas because those are the areas which receive water due, due to flooding, but after some time, uh, the flood is subsides and already the rains are gone. So the media crops can do well there are sugar millets because they are drought tolerant. So they just need the minimum moisture which is remains to be able to yield. So it's an opportunity mainly for those crops because you also find that the seed for that the systems and the seed availability for those crops uh, is low because of the production whereby farmers find it hard to produce seed for those crops because of the drought. So it's an opportunity where we can start producing seed uh, for sorghum and millets using the spade irrigation so that even other farmers can get more seed. Uh, I work on sorghum and millet. These are 
very important crops in dry land areas because they are resilient to drought and also very nutritious. But they have one problem that the seed system is not developed. Most of the seed systems in the regions work on hybrid crops, mainly maize, and they don't work on sorghum and palm millet. So in the, in the past five years, we have been trying to identify a system which works, and we found that uh, combining informal system with the formal system terms work best. The formal system is where we rely on the farmers to get their own seed by recycling, and also we can train them to produce quality declared seed or truly labeled seed. And the formal system is where we have seed companies and agro dealers working on seed. So what we have found is that if you can have both quality declared seed and certified seed working together, then you can have adequate seed which is affordable to the farmers available. Uh, why sorghum? Because sorghum has um, a lot of uses in the market. The demand is very high. The brewing uh, industries, they are looking for the, the, the crop to make beer and make other, other, other products. And also, farmers, they can add value uh, in terms of uh, growing the pop sorghum. They, they can actually produce pop, like just like the popcorn they sell. And uh, for other uses like making wine, there are some farmer groups who have been making wine from sorghum, uh, sorghum wine. And uh, some more uses, you see, like making uh, the snacks, the chapatis, dazis, and uh, for making, uh, for, 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 for use, home use, making porridge, and the ugali in our communities in Kenya, in Tanzania, I understand they, they are aware of that. And um, yeah, so sorghum is, has a a lot of uses and um, working on it in terms of improving uh, through this project and aspect areas of conditions will be very, very uh, important and very beneficial to our communities in East African countries. It's to improve productivity of its pedigree areas using resilient crops like sorghum and millets. It's going to be exciting to see how we can use expertise, experience gained elsewhere, ranging from Pakistan, Sudan, and Ethiopia, to try and replicate this in similar systems to be able to give farmers enough food to eat and for remembering that most of the farmers in these speculative areas are the most poor farmers who rely on small amounts of rainfall and moisture that's really limiting be able to make a living, put food on the table. So, with the technologies that are available, we hope to make a difference, provide food to the people, provide income to the people, provide better health through better nutrition, using the little moisture that's available in those people.